Hi, I'm Kelsey. And I'm Becky. And we're the Sorry Girls. And today we're going to talk about the birds and the bees. Come along to learn a little more. Did you know that globally there are more bees than any other type of pollinator, which makes bees our most important food crop pollinator? It's estimated that one third of all the food we consume has been pollinated by bees, as well as other animals, such as butterflies and birds, which essentially means no bees, no food. So to attract the bees and to keep them happy, we should be focusing on planting bee-friendly flowers. We also want to plant flowers that bloom throughout the year so that the bees always have somewhere to relax and to pollinate. This here is a dahlia and it's a mid-season bloom and we can give you a list below of more flowers that are bee-friendly and will keep your garden happy and healthy and full of bees. And here's what not to do. Contrary to popular belief, a lawn full of dandelions and other weeds might actually be a really good thing. Many wildflowers that we would classify as weeds are some of the most important food sources for native bees. If you're absolutely set on pulling the weeds, allow them to flower first so the bees can enjoy them and then remove them. So remember, don't pull weeds and try to limit your chemical use as much as possible. Far out fact, mason bees are a small bee native to North America and they are a fantastic pollinator. A fantastic pollinator. They can hang out at as many as a thousand blooms per day. Mason bees, unlike honeybees, don't have hives, so they need somewhere else to stay. That's why we're here, to make them a bee house. For this, I'm using a quarter inch thick piece of plywood. We suggest that you buy a two foot by two foot piece. This piece here has already been cut to nine inches. Start by drawing out a piece that is five and one quarter inches wide. Hot tip, measure out each piece one at a time and then cut. Because the saw chews up some of the wood, we don't want to measure it out in advance because by the end, you're not going to have the right measurements. To cut this out, you can use a hand saw, a regular saw, or your fist. Just kidding, I can't use my fist. So today I'm going to use a circular saw. A hot tip for a straight cut is to take a piece of straight lumber and clamp it to the board that you're looking to cut. Line that piece up to your edge of your saw guard and then when you go ahead and cut, you're going to have a nice straight cut. So once you have two pieces of the same size, five and a quarter and five and a quarter, we can move on to cutting our four and three quarter pieces. Ultimately, we just want to make sure that these are half an inch shorter than our first pieces since they are going the inside. For the final back piece, we're cutting one piece that's five and a quarter inches by five and a quarter inches. That would make it a perfect square. Now it's time to wood glue our bee house together. Make sure that you keep the two wider pieces on opposite sides from each other. Add some wood glue on all the sides that are going to be touching each other, as well as at the bottom to attach the back piece. Hot tip, you can use some tape to hold this together as you go. Now let's put that aside and let it dry. Next up, we're going to need some bamboo sticks. These are great because they're hollow, which means that our bees can burrow inside them. You can get these at the craft store or your garden center. Use a handsaw to cut these pieces according to the depth of your bee box. You'll need enough sticks to fill the entire box. And we quickly realized that bamboo cut to this length ends up looking a little bit like bamboo straws. So we're gonna link some below for you if you wanna save some time. If you still have some spaces between your bamboo sticks, you can just go ahead and take some sticks from your yard and slip them into all the extra spaces. And this will make sure that all of your bamboo is in there nice and snug. To hang it up, I'm using a saddle clip. We just happen to have this copper one lying around. I bent it on a slight angle to match the angle of my box, and then I attached it using two small screws. Once those were in, I painted the top of the screws with a copper paint pen because we are extra like that. Lastly, use some strong rope to attach it to your tree. That is a nice looking bee house, if I do say so myself. I want to know how your projects are going. Make sure to mail us photos of your projects using the address at the Sorry Girls and use the PO Box number, hashtag Sorry Girl Squad. And while I have you here, I'm just going to remind you to subscribe 
and ring the notification bell. Birds are also pollinators, and fun fact, they eat natural predators to your plants, which reduces your need for harmful chemical pesticides. An easy way to attract birds is to put out bird feeders. Click the link in the cards to learn how to make your very own teacup bird feeder. Butterflies are also pollinators. Far out fact, monarch caterpillars feed exclusively on milkweed, so if you want to see those, be sure to plant that. So attracting butterflies does start with having the right plants, but if you want to keep them around, you need to make sure you have places for them to hibernate and lay their eggs. I'm going to show you how to make a really easy butterfly house. So I'm going to make this butterfly house out of an old wooden wine box. We see these all the time at the thrift stores, or if you want to buy one new, you can probably get one at your local liquor store. On the sides of your box, mark one inch down and then three inches down, and then connect the two lines to make a nice angle. Connect the two angles on the front and the back as well. Now slide out the front piece. Cut along the lines we drew on the box using a handsaw. Now cut off the top of the front piece as well to make everything flush. Now it's time to make the doors for our butterfly house, so draw three three inch lines on the front piece of your box spaced out evenly. Next we're going to be using a 3 8 of an inch drill bit to help make the openings. At the top and bottom of each one of the lines we drew, drill a hole. Draw a line connecting each side of the hole from the top and bottom to the opposite hole. Cut along the lines with a jigsaw to complete the openings on all three of your holes. Sand everything down. Slide your door back into the front. Now for the roof of our house, we're starting with a 1x6 piece of wood and cutting it down to 7 inches long. Center the lid on the top of the house and drill two pilot holes on either side of the house through the roof and into the sides. Use two screws to attach the roof to the box. We want to make sure we're using screws instead of nails and wood glue so that the lid can be opened every season and cleaned. Next we're using a U-bolt to act as the hook for our butterfly house to hang it. Drill two holes straight down into the roof spaced accordingly to the hook size. Open the lid of the house again by removing the screws to add on the hook. Before closing our house up again, it's time to furnish it, so we're going to use a combination of sticks, barks, and leaves for our butterflies to enjoy. Reese grew on your lid and your butterfly house is complete. Make sure to hang it low and near native flowers so the butterflies can access it easily. Thank you for tuning in today and I hope you learned a little bit about the birds and the bees. To check out more educational films in our collection, make sure you're subscribed to our mailing list. Thank you guys for watching and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.